Well, good morning, family and joy. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our call to worship as we continue in worship. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Won't you stand for our doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. seated our prayer of invocation by the lay minister Deacon Sansare Brown. Amen. And we all uh, <laughs> Bible said be ye also ready. Amen. Let us all bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up. You woke us up in your, our right minds, God. And so this we say thank you, Lord. God, we thank you allowed us to come to your house and be in the presence, God, and fellowship amongst the saints. But now, God, we ask you invoke your divine spirit to be upon this place and that you would speak through our pastor, God, that he would give a word and not only give a word, but that word would plant a seed in our hearts that we not only be hearers, but doers of thine divine word. We ask that you bless those on the way. We ask that you bless those here, God. And we ask continually blessings upon our pastor, our ministers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Minister Brown. Our scripture lesson this morning, which will serve as our sermonic text, is found in Luke chapter 22, and we'll be reading verses 31 and 32 from the New Revised Standard Version. In honor of God's word, we ask if you're physically able that you rest on your feet. Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 31. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our, our hymn for this morning will be on page 240. Oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson floor. Many arrows pierce my heart from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice 
cares are past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service to my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan's arrows vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord leads me ahead, leads whatever be tied. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain height, and behold my Savior there leading in the fight, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low, guiding me I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares will pass, home at last, ever to rejoice. When before the billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, he doth safely keep. And he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares a past, home at last, ever to rejoice. One more time. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares a past, home at last ever to rejoice. I'm going to read the um, upcoming events and ministry updates. Caring Hands Ministry Clothing and Toiletry Drive has been extended to October the 31st. They will go to Kensington Community on Saturday, November the 4th at 10 a.m. See Sister Reba Brown for more information. People's Pantry is being restocked in October. The People's Pantry is continuing to collect canned vegetables as a part of their food Philip Drive. The Willing Workers Sight and Sound will be uh, in June. And the, the, they're going to see Daniel. The cost is in the bulletin, and your deposit can be given to Deacon Cheryl Lovelace. Clergy Appreciation Month. October is Clergy Appreciation Month. And we will be sure to recognize the hard work of our ministerial staff on next Sunday. If a ministry would like to adopt a minister, gifts are welcome and will be given the following, uh, following morning service. If you are interested in being a part of the Mass Choir, join us. All voices are welcome and needed. If you are interested in being a part of it, Please see Reverend Crystal Heath. Male voices are also needed as a restart of the male chorus. You can see Reverend Heath or 
Deacon Archie Rouse III for rehearsal information. Member recognition. The Philadelphia Baptist Association has recognized Sister Shamelia Bond with a mission award. This is a banquet taking place on Saturday, November the 11th at 3 p.m. at the Drexel Brook. Anyone wanting to place an ad in the Souvenir Journal can find the form in the back of the church and must be submitted by October the 22nd. The tickets are $45 per person. Please see me, Trustee Barbara Cooper, if interested in purchasing a ticket. Entrees also are needed uh, when you submit your ticket money. And the entrees are chicken, salmon, or a, a vegetable ve vegan dish. This is Overcomer's anniversary. Praise the Lord. And fourth Sunday uh, will be missionary will be music annual day. Dance ministry rehearsals. Little Angels, Monday, October the 16th. The Women's Dance Ministry, Friday, October the 20th at 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Unified Glory, Sunday, October the 21st at 1.30 p.m. The Noonday Bible Study has resumed in person at noon all are welcome. The mass choir scheduled to rehearse on Monday, October the 16th at 6 p.m. and Thursday, October the 19th at 6 p.m. The men's chorus will rehearse on Mondays at 7 p.m. Saturdays, these are the meetings scheduled, which is October the 21st. The Board of Christian Education meeting at 10 a.m., ushers meeting at 10 a.m., nurses ministry at 11 a.m. And Hallelujah Night, the youth ministry will be hosting its annual Hallelujah Night on Tuesday, October the 31st at 5 p.m. There will be a best costumes prize for adult one adult and one child. All are welcome. Candy donations will be collected throughout the month. Thank you for your advance, in advance for your contributions. In member news, we praise God that Sister Angela Smith had a successful service and is home recuperating. Have a blessed week. And all the people of God say amen. Y'all can do better than that. Let the people of God say amen. The Lord is good. And he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who trust in him. The Lord is good. We're certainly grateful to be here on this Lord's Day and also to uh, recognize Overcomer Sunday. Uh, thank the Lord. Uh, the Bible declares that we have overcome by the word of the, uh, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of his testimony. And so let's give God praise for the opportunity, all of us, <laughs> are overcomers because we've overcome something church say amen praise the lord i um certainly uh i was thinking about it and it just hit me as i was on my way to church this morning <clears throat> this day uh, uh 19 years ago uh this day 19 years ago it's hard to believe 19 years ago I preached my first sermon, and so today we celebrate 19 years of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, and certainly thank the Lord for the journey that is that we're on even now. I also want to thank all of those who went with me on last week to the New Kingdom Baptist Church for their ordination service of their deacons, and thank you for being the kind of people that you are, uh, that you attend, uh, that you help 
and you celebrate, you represent uh, in the ways that you do. Also, uh, this week we were uh, blessed to gather at the Triumph Baptist Church with the uh, Pennsylvania Baptist State Convention, and certainly uh, what a great time we had this week. And I ask that you would continue to pray for the convention. Um, all of our institutions in Philadelphia are undergoing a change, and you know there's a lot of disconnection. Um, from organizations. Um, and so I ask that you would pray for uh, the, those organizations. Uh, church life in Philadelphia is changing, period. Church say amen. Um, people don't go to church like they used to. Um, and so that does not mean, what, and what that says is, it says that we've got to continue to do what we can to show folk the value of knowing Jesus and being connected to the body of Christ. Let the church say amen. And so so it's, it is incumbent upon us uh, to show p are those who are not a part of the church uh, that it, it, it pays to serve Jesus. Amen. Uh, the other thing I want you to do is continue to pray for Sister Yolanda Dingle, who, uh, of course, lost her sister. That service was this past Friday at Holy Temple Church of God in Christ on 60th and Callow Hill. Uh, thank you to Deacon Rouse, who went in my stead, and a resolution was sent to the church. Uh, she also buries a best friend this week. And so um, be praying for her. I spoke with her, and of course, uh, as you can imagine, Imagine when you lose a sister and a best friend all in the same span of time, uh, that can be quite challenging. And so certainly keep her in prayer. Church, say amen. Uh, also, after the 1030 service, we will have a, a brief call meeting. So uh, we certainly want to, there are some things that we just need to uh, discuss. And so we will do that after the 1030 worship. Next week, we will be at the Providence Baptist Church as we celebrate Pastor Jackson's uh, anniversary. I do believe this is his sixth anniversary, and so we're, our goal, and so I'm asking for those who can, uh, this will hopefully be the last outing for a couple of weeks um, as we have been going uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks. So I'm asking that those who can, that you would uh, certainly uh, put it on your calendar, and if you can, make it uh, and go with me, travel with me as we go and celebrate our uh, our beloved brother's anniversary. Let the church say amen. Uh, that is all I have on my notes. Um, I am uh, always want to encourage you, beloved. Uh, thank you for being the kind of people that you are in terms of your giving. And as I say every Sunday, you cannot beat God giving no matter how hard you try. And so again, I always encourage you to keep doing what what you're doing because it is because of you that the lights are still on um, and that the heat will be on um, as the weather gets colder uh, but uh, and all the other stuff that we need the other essentials for this house uh, to keep to run as it should uh, thank you for your liberal giving and I pray that if you um, as you do as the Lord prospers you give and watch the Lord bless you in return. Church, say amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the joy of giving. Thank you for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his life so that we might have it more abundantly. So, Father, I pray, <clears throat> may we, in expression of appreciation and gratitude, give out of the abundance of our hearts. Bless those who have. And, Father, bless those who don't have. You are able to meet every need. And somebody today needs a, a financial breakthrough. And so, Father, I pray in particularly for them. Father, meet their needs. You are able to allow us to 
look in our pants pocket and find extra money. You, you've done that before. You can pay bills because you've done that before. And so, Father, today I pray for those who are struggling. The inflation has gotten to many of us, and it's hard. So I pray today, Lord, that you will graciously and abundantly supply our need. And Father, if you do these things, we will continually praise you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Sometimes you got to pray a little longer for the money. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Reverend Bland is going to give us a sermonic selection. <clears throat> Confusion, peace now reigns. I am a child, I'm a child of the King, and it's all because I am redeemed. redeemed brought with a price Jesus has changed my whole life if anybody asks you just who I am Tell them That I am redeemed I'll tell of his favor i tell of his love I tell of his goodness to me. He purchased my redemption with his own precious blood. And from sin, I've been set free. I am redeemed, brought with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asked you just who I am, Tell them that I am redeemed. And lastly, if you run across anybody that used to know me, you can tell them that I'm doing fine. The last time you saw me, I was lifting up my hands. You can tell them that I've been redeemed. I am redeemed, brought with the price. Jesus has 
changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them that I, I am redeemed. And our God, we thank you that we have indeed been redeemed, brought with a price. Our lives have been changed by the power of God, and so we thank you now. Now, Lord, in these next few fleeting moments, I pray that you will send that anointing that makes preaching effective easy, and I pray also enjoyable. And we'll give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Our souls say amen. Amen. Uh, beloved, today I, I want to uh, thank you, Reverend uh, Huzzy, for leading us in worship. Reverend Bland, thank you for the ministry of music. Um, today I want to take a brief uh, pause from our series, <clears throat> look, at, look, at, look What God Has Done. Um, something came to my uh, attention this week in terms of preaching, and uh, I, wanted, I just felt the need to encourage us uh, this morning in light of all that's taken place. And so the gospel of Luke chapter 22 is where I, you will find me today. Uh, I think we need to hear the words of Christ this morning from this text. The gospel of Luke chapter 22, 32a. Reading this from the New Revised Standard. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. That's it. You may be seated. I want to talk a little bit from this thought using the words encapsulated in verse 32 that your faith fail not. That your faith fail not. That's the rendering of the King James. That your faith fail not. We come to a interesting and pivotal moment in the life of Jesus and his disciples. These words meet us in this moment, this critical hour where there's so much uncertainty regarding the future. We enter this sacred space with so much going on in the world, brothers and sisters. These words come to us at a crucial time. We are watching the world spiral out of control with war between Israel and Hamas and Ukraine and Russia. There are also domestic challenges that we face with the continued violence in this city, including the unfortunate shooting of a police officer in an airport uh, parking lot. There is the inability of the House of Representatives to move forward on legislation due to not having a Speaker of the House. Today we come to this sacred space with much anxiety and fear about what is to come. This day, brothers and sisters, our hearts, there is a note of frustration, anxiety, and uncertainty. And today we need to hear the words of Jesus. We approach this similar situation in the upper room. The earthly ministry of Jesus is ending. 
There's much anxiety for the disciples. For according to John, Jesus told his disciples that he was leaving them and where he was going, they could not go. Uh, they are uncertain regarding the future. What will life look like when Jesus is no longer with us visibly? In addition, Jesus told his disciples at the meal that this would be his final meal with them until he eats anew in the kingdom of God. Je Jesus also revealed that he would be handed over by one of his own disciples. How tragic that one of those disciples, one whom Jesus poured into, one whom Jesus spent time with, one whom Jesus loved, would honestly hand him over. This announcement causes conversation to break out among the disciples Asking that interrogative, is it I? It is easy to feel the urgency and the tension of the moment. However, the concern about Jesus' betrayal is muted by a dispute that arises among the disciples as to who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. This argument among them continues to show their lack of maturity and their insensitivity to the time. Do you get the sense of what's going on in this text, y'all? Jesus offers to them a model of true greatness in the kingdom of God. He shares that the greatest must become like the youngest. And the one who serves must, uh, they, that one who wants to be great must become like the one who serves. This is what the Reverend Dr. Ralph West calls the paradoxicals of the Prince of Peace. Notice the words of Jesus as he offers himself as a model. Verse 27 of chapter 22. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it, is it not the one at the table? But I am among you who serves. When did we see the service of the Savior in action? In the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 1 to 17, Jesus arose from supper and retrieved a towel and basin of water and washed the feet of his disciples. He who was the creator of the world was able to wash the feet of his creation. He who was the creator of all things was able to wash the feet of his disciples. What a great example of humility. And amidst all the arguments and anxiety, Jesus in these two verses, which is captured only in Luke, warns them that times are about to get tough. Life as they knew it would be turned upside down. Let's unpack this for a little bit and then we'll go home. First thing, we see the intention of Satan. The intention of Satan. Somebody shout the intention of Satan. Look at verse 31. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. Simon Peter is called by, out by name. Jesus calls him out twice. And in rabbinical tradition, to call a person by their name twice is either a sign of fondness or sadness. And from the context, Jesus is in a state of sadness. But why does Jesus identify Peter? Why does he single him out? In his discourse with Peter, Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. You remember that in Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. In the gospel of Luke, the focus is on what Jesus began to do and to teach. Acts concerns itself with what Jesus continues to do and to teach through the disciples, namely Peter and Paul. It will be Peter that will play a vital role in the book of Acts. It, he is the preacher on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verses 19 to 39. He is the one that preaches to the family of Cornelius Acts chapter 10 and 11 he participated in the Jerusalem council Acts chapter 5 or 15 verses 6 to 11 all I'm trying to tell you is that Peter was a big deal 
which prompts Jesus to call him out by name. Jesus points out that Satan is playing a part in the whole scheme of things. We must realize this, brothers and sisters, that Satan is involved in much of the calamity that takes place in the world. Uh, look at the text. Uh, he, entered Jude, he entered into Judas, causing him to conspire with the enemies against the Christ. We must never be ignorant concerning the presence of enemies or the, the presence of darkness in our own lives. One must not believe that association with Jesus means immunity from trouble. Do you hear me, brothers and sisters? You don't think that just because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm associated, I know Jesus, there won't be any problems. Because must Jesus bear the cross alone and, and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there is a cross for me. But notice the words of Jesus that he shared. Satan has demanded, desired, asked. The tense of this verb does not give indication of the when of the action. We do not know if this was a recent or a distant asking. There is something else that we must bring out in this. That in the original language, this word means, this word demand it, it carries the idea of feeling that you have a right to do something. The arrogance of our adversary that Jesus highlights in this discourse, there is the feeling that he has the right to attack us. Yet I submit, brothers and sisters, Satan must submit to the sovereignty of God. Do you hear me? Satan must submit to the sovereignty of God. As we view the events of today, the powers of darkness can never overcome the power of God. We have something to rejoice about. That Jesus is still in control. That nothing can thwart God's power and authority. Somebody shout glory today. That nothing can, nothing can stand before the power of God. Let me say this. Satanic power operates by permission. Satan can only operate by permission. Jesus tells the disciples that Satan wants them. You do remember, brothers and sisters, in the book of Job. Jesus, Job, Satan could not attack Job on his own. He had to get permission from God. And for Satan to be unleashed in the world, he has to submit to the sovereignty of God. God will permit him to do what he's going to do. Amen. The hour of testing which would come was a plot and ploy of the devil to have the disciples. He wanted to do, Satan wants to do one thing, sift them as wheat. Jesus uses an agricultural picture to demonstrate a spiritual truth. What does it mean to be sifted like wheat? It deals with the shaking of wheat to get the excesses out of it. John the Baptist spoke about this in his sermon. Jesus, however, may be referring to the writing of Amos. The disciples will undergo a shaking of faith. A shaking of faith. This is designed to be both refining and revealing. And I submit, beloved, each of us will confront our own shaking of faith. Make no mistake about it. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you have. You will undergo a shaking in your faith. And it's for Satan, he wants to destroy us. But God wants to develop us. 
God, God uses the shaking to develop and to just demonstrate the authenticity and the genuineness of our faith for what the devil will mean for evil. God can turn it around for the good. Isn't that good news, brothers and sisters? That nothing that you go through in life, that nothing that you go through, yes, Satan has his own desire. Satan has his own scheme. But God has a plan and a purpose. He uses it. All things work together for the good of those who love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Let the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The stuff that you're dealing with is merely the shaking of faith. He will shake you. He will shake you. He will shake you. For Satan is to destroy you. But for God is to get the excessive stuff that's not supposed to be in you. Can I get a witness in here? Aren't you glad that God cares about you so much that he will shake you to get some stuff out of you? To get the stuff you don't need away from you? He loves you so much, y'all, that God will use trouble. God will use times of testing to remove the excesses out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, thank God for the shaking. Thank God for the shaking. Because I've learned how to trust God through the shaking. I've, I've learned how to praise God through the shaking. I've learned how my faith has grown through the shaking. I've learned how to give glory to God through the shaking. I've learned how to be patient through the shaking. I've learned how to pray more in the shaking. I've learned how to stop being manipulative and conniving. That the stuff that I used to do, I don't do no more. Because because of the shaking, I'm drawn closer to God. Thank God for the shaking. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, That's a good word, Pastor. Yes, sir. May I submit that People's Baptist Church might just be going through a time of shaking. God is shaking us because there's some stuff he wants to get out of us, but there's some stuff he wants to put in us. And you got you can't get it without you gotta have some shaking in your life. Church, 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 submit to the shaking of God. It don't feel good, but submit to it. It hurts, but submit to it. Because there's a greater good in it. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Intent, the intent of Satan to sift us. To sift us like wheat. Sift us like wheat. That's Satan wants to, he wants to totally get rid of us. But Jesus wants to shake us up just a tad bit. And God, 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 God is so good, God will even use the plot and the ploy of the devil. Isn't that good news? Uh, that, that, that's, that's how good, and that, that's how good and good my God is. God, God says, I'm, I'm going to use the plot and the ploy. But there's something else in this text. There is the intent of Satan, but there's also the intercession of our Christ. Yes, Look at the text, verse 32. But I have what? Now we'll close your Bible, go right to verse 32. But I have what? Prayed. Let's do that again. But I have prayed for who? You. Now, verse, I forgot to note this, that in verse 31, 
when he says Satan has desired to sift you, when he talked, he was talking to he was talking to Simon, but he also was talking to the larger part of the disciples, so that you in the original language is actually plural. But when you get to verse 32, that I prayed for you, he's talking specifically and primarily to Simon Peter. Pray that your faith may not fail. Can I say something? There is a beautiful conjunction. There's a beauty in the conjunction, but. There is a beauty in the conjunction, but. Because what but symbolizes is that what follows will cancel out what went before. You got to, brothers and sisters, I, you got to learn to thank God for the butts. Can I get a witness in here? You got to learn to thank God for the, because with every issue, with every challenge, there is a but God. Can I get a witness in here? And if you don't know, if you can't celebrate anything else, you ought to thank God for the but God in your life. Those things that should have killed you, those things that could have destroyed you, but God. Somebody shout, but God. Shout, but God. You want an example? You want an example? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. You have he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sin in which you will walk as, uh, in, the, in, the, in the corruption of your flesh, alienated from your mind. You were by nature the children of wrath, but God who is rich in mercy. He did for you what you could not do for yourself. So even in the sifting, even in the shaking, I've got a but God. Jesus attaches a promise in this moment. Says to Peter, I prayed for you. Now once again, the tense of this verb does not offer any answers. We, we, when did Jesus pray for Simon? We don't know. He might have prayed during one of the several instances in Luke. We don't know. However, we, one, uh, one thing we can say is that his intercession will never end. At present, at present, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is seated to signify that co the completion of the redemptive work ha has been completed. He also is seated until his enemies have been made his footstool. He is also seated to intercede for us. This is what the Hebrew writer said in, in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 that consequently he's able uh, for, for all times to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for us. Jesus ever lives to pray for you and me. The House of Representatives are unable to function for the people because of their failure to secure a Speaker of the House. Yet, Jesus is always available. Isn't that good news, brothers and sisters? That when the government fails, when people fail, when your pastor fails, Jesus is always available. Jesus never fails. Hallelujah. He speaks to God on my behalf. Hallelujah. If you can't shout on nothing else, you ought to shout on the fact that he prays for me. Thank God for my prayer partners. Thank God. But the reason why I'm still here is not because of me. It's not because of the prayer of the pastor. It's not because of the prayer of your partner. It's because you got Jesus who is praying for you. How, can I get a witness? Thank you, Lord. He prays for me. He prays for me. I'm still in church because he prays for me. I haven't lost faith because he prays for me. Reverend Bland, he prays for me. He prays for me. He prays for me. He prays for me. And people, as I submit, he's praying for us. Hallelujah. Right now, as we speak, Jesus is calling out our names. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
since he is seated, he will be our intercessor. Now, when he arrives, he will be our vindicator. Can I get a witness? He sits as our intercessor. But when he gets up, he'll be our vindicator. Can I get a witness in here? Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Jesus tells Peter, I prayed for you. Not that you don't fail, but that your faith don't fail. Huh? Not, uh, Peter, listen at this. Peter was bound to fail. You hear me? Because before the rooster would crow, he would deny him three times. But can I tell you something? Peter's temporary defeat would not end in total deflection like Judas. Judas deflected. He, 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 he. What's that word that I'm looking for? Fall away from the faith. But Peter's temporary defeat would not end in total deflection. And I submit each of us will face life testings. And there will be even instances when we fail in the shaking of faith. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. I don't care how much word you know. There will be some shakings that you will fail. There will be moments where you fail in your trust in God. No, I won't pass because I, I got enough faith. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Don't ever get so conceited that I can withstand everything. Take heed, thank you, Reverend Blair, lest you fall. Let's just be real. Let's just keep it all the way a hundred. All of us will fail. Hmm? All of us will fail at some point. But thanks be to God that even when we fail, our faith can still remain strong. Can I get a witness in here? Can somebody testify? I thank God that even in those moments when I didn't know what I was going to do, when, when I failed to trust God, when I failed to give God my all, even in those moments when I failed to pray. Can I get a witness in here? Because there have been moments I failed in my prayer life. There have been moments I failed in attending church. There have been moments. I, can I get a witness in here? But I thank God that there's a promise that even though I fall, I won't deflect. I can I get a witness in here? Can somebody thank God today? And that's what God, that's what Jesus says to Peter. Jesus says to Peter that, uh, Peter, yes, you're, you are going to fail. You, you're going to deny me three times. But when you return, can somebody shout glory? Can somebody shout glory? There's a promise in the text that even though Judas never returned, even though Judas never got it back on point I'm so glad that Peter God promised Peter you will return and when when you return pick up your brother can I get a witness when you return when you got your life together help somebody to get their life together is there anybody that can testify that do this year you've experienced the shaking of faith but thanks be to God you can testify I never lost my hope I never 
lost my joy but most of all I've never lost my praise is there anybody can y'all help me close that can testify I'm still holding on can you look at somebody and say neighbor I'm still holding on y'all ain't talking look look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm still holding on y'all ain't saying nothing can you point to yourself and declare it in the room and say I'm still holding on and I won't let go because God he's holding on to me can you shout glory can you shout glory ain't he all right ain't he all right yes yes That ought to be somebody's declaration. Shake me. Shake me. Because the scheme of Satan may be my doom, but my sovereign develops me. Thank you, Reverend Blaine. That's a good one right there. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. Can I get a witness in here? Lord, and I'm, this is my prayer for peoples. Shake us. Because there's potential in us, but until we undergo some shaking, it'll never come to surface. In fact, there's some stuff that don't need to be in here. Can I get a witness? Y'all didn't get no amens in here. I said, can I get a witness? There's some stuff, some excesses that the Lord will just Throw us up and shake us. And as he shakes us, the excesses is blown away. Yeah. Shake me. Because I want strong faith. I, I'm, I'm tired of operating still being the same way I was years ago so in order for me to have strong faith I've got to go through some shaking y'all I'm done if you're saved and you know it clap your hands if you're saved and in the church wave your hand thank the Lord I'm Lord's Lord Try me now and see, see if I can be completely your, let's do it again, oh, I'm yours, Lord, everything I'm not, everything I am, every, I've got I'm your, oh Lord, <laughs> try me now and see, see if I can be completely, I said I like the song and then can't even remember the words, <laughs> bless your hearts, I hope you were blessed by the word of the Lord today, praise the Lord, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Be mindful, brothers and sisters, we are going back to our regular schedule this week. So Bible enrichment will be on uh, Wednesday night and uh, at 12 noon for, uh, for 
afternoon Bible study and then Bible enrichment at 6 via Facebook or if you want to come into the sanctuary. So we're back on schedule. There is the citywide revival uh, that's going on, but I didn't put too much emphasis on that. Uh, I'll go up one day this week to represent us, uh, but that's going to be just about it. Um, we're going to try to can't be off schedule for too long because you start getting out of schedule. Folks say, okay, they start developing new routines. And so uh, we got to get back on schedule. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Um, I, I want to just say this today, 8 o'clock, um, as we already close. <clears throat> um, you all heard last week or a few weeks ago that uh, I'm running for moderator for the Pennsylvania Eastern Keystone Baptist Association. <clears throat> Um, there was rumors that were being circulated and I had to, uh, we had to finally get the official confirmation from the moderator on yesterday. And so it looks like the one, and I'm asking your prayers for this, um, as we prepare to ascend that role, um, it looks as if that the one that was challenging me has dropped out of the race. And so, so, and so, um, it looks like I will be, all things go well. And so what I'm asking, <clears throat> we're in the process of building our team. Um, and I want to say this, and I, and I have to say that our, eight, our 1030 worshiper, our 1030 worshipers, that you are my primary responsibility. And so, even though I will have responsibilities outside of this house, and there will be calls for me to do that, you are my primary responsibility. In fact, I've, I've said last, to someone last week that <clears throat> I'm cutting back on morning engagements and we're gonna prioritize um, because, um, Shepherd can't be away too long because when shepherds away, folk come out to play. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly. If I go away, all it takes is one Sunday for me to go away and folk act like they ain't got no sense sometimes. <laughs> Y'all know, know I'm telling the truth. And so my goal is to spend more time, much of my 10th year, as much as possible. If, they, if, if it ain't an afternoon or a weeknight, my goal is, if it's important, then we'll, we'll, we'll negotiate. But my primary responsibility is to feed y'all. Um, am I right about that? Y'all are my primary responsibility. So I just want y'all to know that, that I take seriously your spiritual development. I got ministers who are going to be helping me. As well, and I'm thank I'm thankful for that, um, and I've got the best here. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with great deacons, trustees, and ministers, and they assist me. <clears throat> and so, but I just want you to, if you will, keep me in prayer as we are strategizing for this new season of ministry. Is that all right? Thank you so much. All right, let's get ready to close in prayer, Reverend. Uh, Huzzy, why don't you pray for us? And uh, I'm going to go sit down. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the gift of this worship experience. Thank you for the reminder that you have gifted us not only a Savior, but you have gifted us an intercessor. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let the church sing. Ah. Amen. Go in peace.
Testing one, two. Testing, sir. Testing. Testing. can't do all this. Okay. Oh, the heater just turned, that, they just turned the heat on. Yeah. Yeah, she just turned the heat on, so it's gonna smell like that for a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta get all that stuff off here, man. What's that? See, huh? That this it, this don't come on. Oh. This the, this don't this don't even function. Oh. That don't the, the heater's down there. Oh, that oh. that yeah. and that thing too. So yeah, on uh, Wednesday. Deacon, so Deacon, you better go ahead and be all fashionable. Um, you better go ahead. <laughs> 